In this video, I'm gonna reverse engineer a simple driver that we built a couple of videos ago. All this driver does is just prints hello world and it uses the dbg print function for this. This is a function that can only be called from the kernel. So you have to have a driver to call this function. And we, if we take a look here at the documentation of dbg print, we can see that this sends a message to the kernel debugger. So I'm not gonna go over the code here and also I'm not gonna cover how to build this because I already have this information on the video specifically about making this driver. On this video, I'm gonna reverse this. And I'm gonna assume you already have the sys file. So you have the driver.sys. To reverse this, I'm gonna use a program that is called Cutter. This, you can, this program is completely free. You can get it using your package manager. I just got it on Windows using the winget package manager. Afterwards, I'm gonna open the driver.sys file. So I'm gonna click here, select and driver.sys, and then click here, open. Afterwards, press here, okay. Now it's gonna analyze the file. As you can see, we have a main dashboard here with a bunch of general information about the file. And here at the bottom, notice that we have a couple of tabs. Let's start by taking a look at the graph over here. So I'm gonna press here on graph. And you can see here, we, we can see the disassembled assembly right over here of the main entry point. And we can see, for example, it's using the LEA instruction. This is short for load effective address. And what this does is loads this address into this register. As you can see over here, it's loading the string into the register. If we double click on this, you can see it's not showing us anything here in the graph. But if I press here on hex dump in the bottom over here, we can see here the exact string that is in memory. Now let's click back here on entry and I'm gonna go back to the graph. After it's loading the string into RCX, it's calling dbgprint. But if we click here, you can see it's not directly calling dbgprint. It has a little stub over here that this one jumps to the actual dbgprint. Now if I cl double click on this, you won't see anything over here. So I'm gonna go back by pressing on the back arrow over here. If you wanna see more information about where this comes from, I'm gonna go here to the tab that talks about imports. So press here on imports. And here we can see this symbol. We can see the import of dbgprint and where it comes from. It's gonna come from ntos kernel.exe. This is the executable file of the Windows kernel. But what this means is that this will be resolved once the driver is gonna run. Also, you see this address over here, it's gonna change. And now to the second part of this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up kernel debugging and debug this driver as it's starting. For this, I'm gonna use VirtualBox. As you can see here in VirtualBox, I already have Windows 10 Virtual Machine here set up. It's easy to get this set up on your computer. You can easily get the ISO from the Microsoft official website. By the way, before running this, I recommend you take a snapshot. You can just do this easily by clicking here and then snapshots and just take a snapshot. I already have one, it's called initial. And it's nice to have a snapshot since if you have any changes, you can just go back and revert them. Now let's go back and click here and click again on details. And before I'm gonna boot this machine up, we're gonna need to configure a couple of stuff to enable kernel debugging. For this, I have here the official Microsoft guide on setting up kernel mode debugging. And I specifically like using the COM port method, even though I know there's other methods like using network debugging, but I find the COM port to be the easiest to set up. And just scrolling here a little down, we have a couple of stuff that we need to set up inside of the virtual machine. But if I scroll more down, I need to set up this in the configuration of the virtual machine before I'm starting it. We need to set up the COM port so we can connect and debug this from outside. For this, I'm gonna go back to VirtualBox here and I'm gonna press on the settings of this virtual machine, Windows 10. And I'm gonna click here on serial ports. And on port one over here, I'm gonna enable. And I'm gonna change the port mode here to be host pipe. And I'm gonna uncheck this. I don't want this to connect to an existing pipe. I want this to create a pipe itself. Now to get information about exactly what path I need to put here, I'm gonna go back to the documentation here. And this will be the basic skeleton of the path except I'm gonna use something else instead of pipe name. Let's call this, for example, Windows 10 debug port. 
And I'm gonna also copy this because I'm gonna use this later when I'm connecting with the Windows debugger. Now I'll just click here, okay. And now we're ready to boot this. So I'm just gonna press start here. I'm going to just drag the driver.sys from here to my virtual machine. If it doesn't work in your machine, you should probably install the guest editions. You can do this easily by pressing here on devices and then install guest editions CD image and just follow the setup and get it installed on your virtual machine. Then go here and enable drag and drop. I have it bidirectional over here. Now back to the virtual machine, I'm going to go here and put driver.sys in the main C directory. Let's just give it another name. So I'm going to call it nearest driver. Now, one more thing I need to set up before we're starting to debug this is that I need to go here to the command prompt. I'm going to run this as administrator and I'm going to go back to the setup guide and we're going to scroll up again and I'm going to need to configure both of these commands. I'm going to use for this BCD edit as specified over here and BCD edit is a nice useful program that enables us to change all kinds of boot parameters on Windows. This, these commands basically enable kernel debugging on the current machine. So let's start by running BCD edit debug on. Afterwards, I'm going to set the debug settings. I'm going to set it as serial and specify the port and the baud rate. Debug port is going to be 1. As we specified, this is going to be in COM1. Now everything is configured, we can just go ahead and reboot the system. So I'm going to go here and reboot. Now as you can see, Windows is going to get stuck on boot. And the reason for this is that it's waiting for a kernel debugger to connect. Now in order to connect, I'm going to use the Windows debugger or WinDBG. You can get this on the Windows Store or just using WinGet if you don't have this already on your computer. And I'm going to run this as administrator. Over here, I'm going to click on file and attach the kernel. And here in the port, I'm going to paste what we copied earlier. This is the pipe that I wanted to connect to. And make sure you have here selected com. And that's it for here. So I'm going to just click OK here. And now it's just going to connect to the virtual machine. OK, and everything is successful. We now have it braked on some instruction. I'm just going to run G over here. I'm going to tell it to continue executing. And you can see that Windows will continue booting right now. Now after Windows finished booting up, I'm just going to go ahead and load the driver. For this, I'm going to open the CMD. And I'm going to run this with administrator rights. First command I'm going to use is sccreate. Let's call it, for example, nearest driver. And then I'm going to use bin path. Specify the binary path of the sys file of the driver. This will be nearest driver.sys. And the type is going to be kernel for kernel driver. Now we can see that this is successful. And I can run sc start nearest driver. But I'm not going to run this yet. First off, I want to set a breakpoint on my debugger. So I'm going to breakpoint with control break. As you can see, now we got a breakpoint and we stopped on a certain instruction over here. And I can start typing commands here. First command I'm going to type in is I'm going to use bm. This will breakpoint on a pattern. I'm going to now give it a pattern that I want to breakpoint on. And let's say I want to breakpoint on all the modules that have dbg print inside of them. So we have asterisk over here, and then exclamation point, and dbg print. 
asterisk over here means that we want on every module that has the DVG print symbol. Now I'll just press enter here. And as we can see, this created three breakpoints. These are the ones that are matching my pattern. And I know that one of them I'm gonna land on because my driver calls one of these. Now I'm just gonna run G to continue execution. I'm gonna go back to my virtual machine. Looks like the breakpoint already hit, so I'm just gonna continue this. This is not relevant for my driver. I'm gonna go back to my virtual machine and start the driver. Nice, and we got a hit over here. We have it on NT, exclamation point, and then DVG print. So this is our driver. We can know for sure that this is the driver if we check the RCX register. So for this, I'm gonna use the R command, R and then RCX. R is for register. We get here the address of RCX, so I'm just gonna copy this. So I'm just gonna copy this by marking this and using the right mouse button. Then I'm gonna use the DA command and I'm gonna paste this with the right mouse button again. And DA means display ASCII. So this will display the ASCII that is in this address in memory. And this is indeed from Nier's driver, as we can see right over here. Now, if we take a look at the stack by using the K command, we can see where this comes from. So at the top of the stack over here, I have the DBG print, but right beforehand I have Nier's driver. So if I just copy this, Let's copy this, and I'm gonna use the U command, paste it over here. U is for unassemble, so this will disassemble the code that is in this location. We can see our part of the code of the driver. And in fact, if I replace one A over here with zero zero, we can see all the entry point of the function until, the, until we got the return instruction right over here. And here's the load effective address that we saw before that loads a string into RCX, and this is the call that goes eventually to, to the DVG print. 